title of my message is this, all right? God is with us even in our trials. Amen, brothers and sisters. You see, the Lord Jesus has said to us, as you are you know, living in this world, as you journey in this world, you will face trial and tribulation. And <clears throat> there is no excuse to it. I'm not prophesying to you, you're going to face trouble. Whether I prophesy to you or I'm not prophesying to you, somehow as you live in this world, you will face some issues, you will face some trial. But let me encourage you by saying this, the Lord Jesus does not stop there, but he continued to say, take heart, I already overcame all this, this world. So that means one, the Lord Jesus already gave us victory. Amen. You know, it is so easy or to remind yourself when everything goes smooth, when everything is nice, you can think that God is with us. Okay, But when there is trial, when you go through storms, when you go through uh, fire, you know, in your life, you go through fire, okay, that's a time many of the believers will start to have question mark, is God punishing me? Is God already left me? Okay, because at that time, at that place, you will feel lonely. You will feel there's no one with you. You can't even hear anything. You will literally feel maybe God have left you. Okay? But let me tell you, our God is a covenant keeper. And His word always stands forever. Okay? The Bible says, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word by no means will pass. It will be there always. Amen? And God said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. When you go through fire, when you go through waters, when you go through, you know, trial and difficult time, God is with you. Amen? See, I'm going to bring to your attention a very beautiful Bible story. I'm going to read to you from book of Daniel chapter 3. Probably by now you already know what I'm going to speak about. Okay? I'm going to read to you 30 verses from here. Right? Bear with me. Then I'm going to share with you some points, very important points that you can take home today. Okay, all right. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 60 cubits high and 60 cubits wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And he then summoned the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image he had set up. So the satraps, perfects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> have set up that they stood before it. <coughs> what happened is, you know, during the exile time, people of God, it was under the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. All right. So uh, during that time, suddenly Nebuchadnezzar, the king, came with an idea and he formed or he built a very huge idols. Very big idol, six cubit height. Okay. Very huge. And it made by gold. And he had declared the decree that every official, every people that was under him have to bow down to this idol and have to worship this idol. That was the decree that was given. All right? Everything was normal. Everything was good. But suddenly, things changed. A new kind of decree came. A new kind of rules came. And that is totally against saying the people of God, especially Daniel and Daniel's three friends. Okay, later you know who is Daniel's friend. Amen? Verse 4. Then the Herods loudly proclaimed, Nations and people of every language, that is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of a horn, flute, zither, lyre, harps, pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of God that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will be immediately thrown into the blaz blazing furnace. There was... What was said to the people? Okay? Even the people of God is there. And it was said to the people of God, he said, 
when there is a sound, when there is a, you know, trumpet and all kind of music, all kind of, uh, you know, was blown away, all of you have to bow down and worship this image. Forcefully was asked to do this. Then the consequences, they say, if anyone did not bow down and worship this idol that Nebuchadnezzar has built, you will be thrown into a... Uh, see, when they call a blazing furnace, it is not just a barbecue fire. <laughs> okay? It is not barbecue fire. It is really hot. And later you will know how hot is that. Okay? It was super hot. Even if you put an iron, the iron will melt. Okay? Then what happened? <clears throat> Let's see. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kind of music, all the nations and people of every language fell down and worshipped the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set. At this time, some of Astro just came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to the King Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. Your majesty has issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harps, pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship image of God. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing fire. But there are some Jews who you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, your majesty. They neither serve your gods, nor worship the image of gold you have set up. That was a problem. You know, Daniel and his friends, they were one of the top class in Nebuchadnezzar's administrative team. So there's jealousy. All right, there's envy. And you know how they have plotted much. They have plotted to remove Daniel also. All right? Then now, all his friends also in trouble. And these are Jews. These are people of God. They're not going to worship any idol. But when they found out there are people that not, does not worship the idols of Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> you know what happened? They came to the king. And they told the king, King, how come? You have declared. You have decreed. But there are people not following. Okay? Then what happened to Daniel's friend? Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. Now when you heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kind of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. You know what the king is saying? Again, they're going to have another sound. But if you can bow down and worship what I have built, then it is good for you. Otherwise, he said, but if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from the hand of God? You know, from my hand. You know, this is what Nebuchadnezzar said. Nebuchadnezzar said, if you are not following, simple. I'm going to throw you into the fire and let's see which God will come and save you from my hand. That is very prideful. That is arrogant. And the king is also challenging God. So the king is putting himself above God. Alright? And challenging the people of God. And he said, I will see who is going to come and rescue you. Is there any circumstances in your life that speaking to you right now, I will see who will come and rescue you. Is there any situation that you are facing in your life that speaks to you? It seems like the situation is telling you, there's no way out for you. No one going to help you. No one going to rescue you. No one going to deliver you. No one going to bring breakthrough into your life. You are finished. It's your situation speaking to you like that. 
And that was what Nebuchadnezzar saying <coughs> to Daniel's three friends. Such a difficult situation for them. But you know what? What these three person is doing, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, after they heard the intimidation of the king, life-threatening situation, do you know what is their stand? Do you know what is their decision? This is what they have decided in their life. He said in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, replied him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this, mat in this matter. <clears throat> if we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God we serve will be able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your, your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your God or worship the image of gold you have set up. This was the stand of the people of God. They are faithful. You know, where is their confidence? Even in a life-threatening situation, they are almost lose their life. And the king have the final decision. And this king is not a good king, not a nice king. Right? And they know the consequences because these three persons, they are also an official. They are also the worker in Nebuchadnezzar's administrative team. And they know who is Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar meant business. If you say, I'm going to finish you, I'm going to finish you. And they know. But you see the answer, what they have given to the king. They say, king, listen, it's okay. If you throw us into the fire, okay, my confidence is in my God. And my God is going to rescue us from this fire. Then they continue to say, even if my God did not rescue me, by no means, I'm not going to worship any idols. I'm going to stay faithful to my death. That is what they say. You know, how many of us can say like this? How many of us can stood for our, you know, for our faith? Not be shaken. All right. You see, you haven't seen persecution yet in Malaysia. It's nothing here. But do you know that those countries that I've been before and preached there, how much people are suffering for the sake of gospel? Okay, they lost their family. They lost their life. Some of the pastors and pastor's wife was burned life. You know why? Just for the sake of gospel. And they continue to work. They continue to deliver. Okay. And I heard a testimony of one man. Okay. I seen him face to face. I heard his testimony. He is a Pakistani. But he have a calling to minister in Afghanistan. And you know who is there. At one time as he was ministering to the people and helping the poor people in Afghanistan, he was caught by a group of Talibans. He and two more friends. Exactly the same situation. <laughs> okay. All right. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they was caught and they was literally brought into a cave where they were living. Okay, and all three of them, I heard this story from him. All three of them was kneeling down, hand tied, everything was kneeling down, and were just about to lose their life. And they did not renounce God, they stood for their faith. Okay, just before finish, okay, just one minute before those people end their life, suddenly. Another person walk into the cave. Okay? And that person, I've seen that these three people are doing good things for their people. And just because of that, that person came in and said, why are you doing this to these three? Because these three people are actually helping our people. The poor people, the children. Just because of that, God, you know, just came in and uh, they were set free. And I heard the testimony First hand, not you know, recorded somewhere. I heard, okay, and I heard his testimony. Okay, persecution. What we are facing is nothing. Okay, 
You see, got nice aircon and everything, you know, right? right? That thing you haven't seen yet, all right? Okay, but we don't ask for it, lah. Okay, so you must appreciate what you have. Okay, do you know that in some places people can can even read Bible? They memorize Bible because they cannot have Bible. They remember. I think in our group I sent before, from China and all. Okay, appreciate what we have. Okay, so this is what exactly happened. And they stood for their faith and they spoke the word to the king and said, "King, listen. No matter what, even we die, we're not going to worship all those idols. Amen." Okay, next one. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. Okay, and he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. Can you imagine? Seven times more hotter. Okay, you put this chair, the whole things melt down, include the iron. Seven times. You see how hot is that? Huh? Seven times heated, seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldier in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So this. Men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. One shot, they throw them. If you see in some of the you know Bible stories, over Bible stories in in YouTube, it was not exactly what happened here. So that one is they tie them up and then pour oil and then put the fire. I want nothing. It was, you know, it is like really a melting fire. Okay, and they were thrown inside together with all their, you know, their clothes, the turban, and everything. One shot, seven times more hotter. Then the Bible says here. Then the king's command was so urgent, and the furnace was so hot that the flame of the fire killed the soldier who took up. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing fire. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his servant and his advisor, "Were not there three men that we tie up and throw into the fire?" They replied, "Certainly, your Majesty." Then, and then he said, "Look." I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of God. This is what King Nebuchadnezzar said. When they throw the three person into the fire, the fire was so hot. Even the the soldier, the strong soldier who attended to these three person, killed. They was not inside the fire; they just outside. But standing outside already killed them. And you know how hot is that? Then at that moment, suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up, jumped up, and he saw, and he said, "Hey, we throw only three person, right? Is my calculation correct, or my eyes something wrong, or what today?" Then they say, "Yes, it's three." Then he said, "How come there is a fourth one? You know what is happening there?" He said, "Look, I see four men walking around the fire. <laughs> walking around the fire. How awesome is that? Okay. Do you know, in your trying moment, in your difficult moment, okay, you can walk with the Lord. Okay, you can continue, rejoice. All right." He can continue to have a good time with the Lord. And here, I like what they said here. He said, "Look, I see four men walking around the fire, unbound, unharmed." At first, I thought I want to make my title "unbound, unharmed." Now today, I change. Amen. And the fourth looks like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, "Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servant of the Most High God, come out! Come here!" So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, perfect governors, and the royal advisers crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, no, their hair. Of their heads, singed, their robes were not scorched. Were was not there was not smell of fire on them. Nothing was lost, even their hair still intact. Amen. All right. 
I say hey, and everybody will laugh. Everybody will smile at me. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And their cloth was not burned. Their turban was not burned. And they don't even have fire smell. They only have Jesus' smell upon them. That was, you see, suddenly there's a change of heart in King Nebuchadnezzar. You see, when you suit up for your faith, it will also will enable another person to encounter Jesus. Your faith in God, your walk with God can impact the people around you. Okay? So it's only the question is, are you compromising? Let's say uh, these three Jews, they compromise on their values. They say, okay, okay, we don't want to die, we worship. I think King Nebuchadnezzar will, ha will never have the chance to see the one and true God in his life. And that is what happened here. Amen? Then, then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise, to be, praise be to the God of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was sent his angel and rescued the servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their life rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces and their houses will be turned into piles of rubble. For no other God can be served in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the, prom in the province of Babylon. Hallelujah. Amen. Actually, trial time is a promotion time. Amen. I think somebody have to write this. Your trying time is your promotion time. And they stood in their faith. They stood faithful to God. They continued to worship the Lord alone until there's a change in the king's heart. And the king began to declare, he said, everybody, you must worship the God of, okay, the God of Aaron, the God of uh, Jonas, okay. Always get jammed there, you know. All right. Amen. Because of the half faith. And everything changed. And I like the fact you read here, from trial to promotion. Maybe I should, you know, entitle my message like that also. From trial to promotion. God promoted so every trial time, every difficult time that you are going through, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, God is with you. God knows how to vindicate you. God knows how to protect you. Okay? God knows how to promote you. I like that. Amen. Promotion is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the first thing that I want to share from this story is this, brothers and sisters. Unpredictable events of life. Sometimes things may happen when you don't, when you least expect it. Something will happen when, okay? But if your attitude is right before God, if you continue to walk with Him, if you continue to serve Him, okay? You are just, you don't worry about any other things, okay? So whenever there's a storm come, there's difficulty come, you still will stand firm. You are not shaken. Okay, you are not disturbed. You are still being still. Hear what happened here. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, six cubits high and six cubits wide, and is set up on the plain of Adura in the province of Babylon. See, everything was good. Okay, of course they have some challenges, some other challenges, but it was not a life-threatening challenges for Daniel or his friends. Okay, they was working, they was doing their best. They were shining. If you see, Daniel and his friends, they were above anyone. A class, top class. But suddenly, unpredictable events of life came. Suddenly, the king decided to build an image. Suddenly, there's a decree was given. Everybody must bow, bow down and worship my idols. If not, I will kill you all. Life changed. Situation changed. No, let me tell you, do you expect that our life will be like this, maybe last year or the year before? Okay? 
with all these uh, SOPs. You know, you can't even freely go anywhere now. Okay? Do you expect this? No. No one of us, everybody was enjoying life. Everybody, you know, have good time. Everybody was going for everywhere without no restriction, no problem. But suddenly, now you can't even shake hands with somebody. Is he coming out early? Let's have to sanitize here. <laughs> you can't even shake hands with somebody. You cannot sit close to your listen. And you can't even travel with your family. It's only restricted by three people. I got four at home. Okay? So you know what I do? So today we want to have breakfast. I say, how come I got four? How? I want to hide one in the bonnet, does it get not? Okay. So I said, never mind. I take my two-wheeler, my bicycle. So that's why I ride bicycle today. <laughs> Amen. God is still good. I had my good time. Cycle. Then I had my good one time me. In Sungai Pinang. Then after that, I took my wife and my kids. Go back first. I want to have my own cycling time. So I went to the woods. I went to the Sawapadi. Had a good time. I said, not bad, huh? Amen. Praise God. Okay. When the enemy throw at you lemon, you know what you do? To a uh, lemonade. <laughs> and enjoy the drink. Amen. Hallelujah. That's it. Okay. Praise God. And then the day, a few days ago, uh, because uh, my wife, kids all already go to school, I was sitting alone. I was so hungry, you know. I want to go to the shop uh, now. Uh. So I walk. I have a good walk. I say, no bad. I can keep feet, you know. You know? Praise God. This is what happened to them. Suddenly things change. And none of us expected that we will be like this. And we don't know how things are going to be next. Hallelujah. But take heart. God is with us. Do you know that God is with you? Okay. In whatever situation that you are facing. So don't be surprised if anything come or the enemy throw at you lemon or whatever. I like, know. Okay. Don't be surprised. Just continue to walk with God. Continue to be faithful to God. Continue to worship Him. Don't be shaken. Right? Amen? Praise God. Number two, okay? The enemy's intimidation. The enemy will come with all kinds of intimidation just to scare you. Here, what happened? King Nebuchadnezzar already declared, already decreed, when there's a sound, harp, flute, all those, everybody have to bow down and worship. If not, I'm going to kill those people that are not worshipping. I'm going to throw inside. Threats. Intimidation will come. What do you do when... The enemy is intimidating you, okay? You are in a watch of losing your job, all right? The enemy is laughing at you. Hey, I'm going, to, I'm going to remove your job. I'm going to remove this from you. I'm going to remove that from you. What are you going to do, okay? Maybe your medical report is saying, oh, you count your days, man. Your days are numbered. So how do you face? How do you face your intimidation? How do you face your trouble? Here. Okay, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They face the intimidation. They never run away from the intimidation. They never be shaken because of the intimidation. They stood still. They be still and know that their God will rescue them. Amen. You know, two days ago, I was having my run. Okay, normally I run after 10 p.m. or after 11 p.m. Okay, I was running because after my kids all settled down already, I was running. In my place, there are some stray dogs. Every time I pass by that place, nothing happened. But this time, I don't know, one of the dogs, the stray dog, went crazy. Suddenly barking at me, running furiously, and want to, like, you know, something like want to bring me down, man. That full of man business that day. Okay? I don't know if he got a problem with his wife or not. I have no idea. He quarreled with anybody or not. I don't know. This fellow went crazy already. He was barking and he's coming, attacking me. You know. you know what I did? Many people, you know what they will be? They will take off, man. They will take off, they'll run. You know what? When a dog chase you, when you take off, you finish. Okay? That fellow will be coming, biting your leg. And I turn to the fellow, I look at the fellow. 
I look at the photo and say, let's see la, you or me today. La, no. I get really mad, you know. I say, I'm minding my own business. Okay, I'm running on this. This is not your father's road, you know. Okay. I, I, I one moment I get pissed off in the dog, you see. I say, I'm already going through so many things now. You are barking at me now. <laughs> you got what I mean? Okay. I want to have a peace of mind. La. Leave me alone. La. No. I feel like coming after me. Like I want to bite me. I look at the fly. I say, let's see like you or me today. <laughs> I look at the fly. I went near him, you know. The fellow stopped and ran away. <laughs> you see? Intimidation is like that. Enemy is like that. Enemy will make noise. Their sound will be loud. Okay? They will bark at you. They will say all kinds of things. But you don't be afraid. You face the intimidation. <laughs> See, what a perfect timing. God give me all this. Uh, God give all this you know, illustration so that you can understand. I did not run from the dog, you know. And I just faced the dog. I said, let's see, man, you or me. And I fellow ran away. Then, lightning's fast. God speak to me at that moment. That's how you face intimidation in life. I said, thank you, Lord. Another point for my message. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good. So, don't be afraid. Okay, enemy can make so loud. You see, enemy always make loud noise to scare you. You know how? Enemy is like roving lion. Okay, that is without teeth. They want to devour you. Okay, a lion without teeth cannot kill you one. You will never die. Okay, how to bite? No teeth. Cannot really, man. Okay, that's why the Bible says they have no teeth, but the sound is very intimidating. Okay, hallelujah, praise God. Number three, be confident in God. So where you you place your confidence? Where is you? Where do you place your hope? If you place your confidence in the wrong place, I tell you, when the intimidation come, when events of life change suddenly. And you face trial and tribulation, that's where many people will fail. Many people won't make it. But if you put your trust in God, face, you know, whatever that you face, I tell you, brothers and sisters, you won't be shaken. You will smile at the storms. Hallelujah. That's what happened. Mish Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God that we serve, able to deliver us from it and will deliver us from you. That is their confidence. You, know. you see, they are telling to a person who is going to kill them. It's like challenging the person. You know. So that's how their confidence is in God. So where do you place your confidence, brothers and sisters? Ask this question. You know, sometimes when you hear this kind of message, this kind of point, you just go back, you ponder back. You check your heart. I say, God, am I really trusting you? Now ask yourself, do you really trust God or not? Mm -hmm. Is God is the only source in your life? Ask this hard question at times. Sometimes we... We just, okay, we receive and then we go back and we forget about that. But do you meditate on it? Do you know that this one thing you can meditate for two weeks? <laughs> because it's deep. Check your heart. Do you really trust God? Do you really place your confidence in God alone? Or you are placing your confidence in other places? Check your heart. Amen. So that God can show you. Sometimes God will show you. I say, hey, I think in this area you are trusting me, but the other area you are not trusting me. God may show you. Okay? God wants you 100% rely on Him. And you will never go wrong when you rely on God 100%. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The next one that I want to share with you, place your trust in God alone. Okay? Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude towards them changed. Listen carefully. His attitude towards them changed. The Bible says the king's attitude towards them changed. You see, this three person was under his administrative. 
okay, was working under him. Maybe probably he have a good view about them, okay, because they are bright, they are smart, okay. He can accomplish many things through these three fellows because they are one of the officials. But here the Bible says when they don't agree with the king, when they stand firm for the truth, okay, and be faithful to their, to their God, what happened? The attitude of somebody that was okay with them changed. Brothers and sisters, listen to me carefully. Those who are celebrating today, celebrating you today, it does not guarantee in six months down the road or next year, they will still celebrate you. Okay? Again, I say, when you place your trust and your hope in wrong places, besides God, you are setting up yourself for huge disappointment. So continue to place your trust in God. Okay? You see, when you come to a place where you are immune to the praises of men, then you will be immune for the criticism of men also. You understand or not? Okay? But if you are not immune for the praises of men, okay? Now they may celebrate you, they may, they may, you know, they may, they may say a lot of good things, okay? If you are not immune to that. It's, you see, every time when people come and say something good about me, I say, Pastor, I praise God for you, you are like this, like that, like that. Okay, praise God, good message, Pastor, all these things. I always say, you know what? I always say, thank you very much for your encouragement. Thank you. Then I turn back. All the glory to God. I say I praise God for everything. Because it's Him. Okay? I won't say, no, 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 no. Don't thank me. No, don't thank me. Don't. I won't say, I won't say the kind of thing. I say, thank you very much for your encouragement. I praise God for you. Okay? But I turn all those to God back. I say all this because of our mighty God. He is awesome. Amen? Hallelujah. When you are immune to the praises of men, then you can face, okay, criticism of men also. So continue to place your trust in God alone. Hallelujah. God will never disappoint you. God will never leave you. And he's always with you. Amen. The last one that I want to share with you, okay. God did not put out the fire. He put, he just put Jesus there with them. Sometimes in your life, God may not remove the problem. God may not bring the bomba to put down the fire. No. Okay? In their case, okay? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God did not send a huge uh, you know, fire or a huge flood to put down the fire, is it? Okay? He did not put down the fire. The fire was there. Okay, the problem was there. But he sent the Lord Jesus in the midst of that fire, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of that problem. Jesus was with them because the Bible says the Lord was with them in that fire. And they did not burn. The fire did not harm them. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in your trouble or in your trial, when you know the Lord Jesus with you, he will never leave you. No forsake you. Let me tell you, nothing going to happen to you. Okay? Your clothes will be nice. Your hair will be nice. Okay? You will come out well from that trial. Not only come out well from the trial, but you will come out stronger. You will be promoted. Alright? It could be a spiritual promotion. You turn to become a much stronger person in the Lord. Okay, you turn to become much deeper in the Lord. Hallelujah. So every trial that you are facing, every difficulties that you are facing, if you respond well, if you react well, you know what will happen to you? Okay. You will learn and you will come up stronger. You know, there's two things only when somebody is going through betrayal or somebody is going through hurt, you know, unforgiving moment or you know any kind of hurt you name it there's two way of respond 
But then you turn to become bitter and turn to become an angry person. Oh, you respond well and you learn from it and let God to bring you out from all those situations. You know what will happen to you? You will be promoted. You become stronger, much wiser. Okay, you become matured. Hallelujah. I like that. You know, I just like the last word. They were promoted. You know, much earlier than I shared with you. Amen. So let me encourage you today, brothers and sisters, no matter what you are facing in life, okay, God is with you. You are not alone. It is not a surprise what you are going through in life. It is not a surprise the entire world is going through this, this kind of season to God. It's not a surprise to God. And let me tell you, God is with us. Okay? Tell your neighbor, God is with us. Okay? Amen? So don't worry. Don't worry about your job. Don't worry about your rice bowl. Okay? Don't worry if your wedding day is coming nearer. Right? Just smile. Everyone. Amen. Esther, Samuel, praise God. Be cool. No, I always said this to Reuben. Anyhow, you'll get married. Lah. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Okay, anyhow, you'll marry. Simple as that. Just be happy. Amen. Praise God. When the enemy throw lemon to you, what do you do? To lemonade and enjoy the drink. Hallelujah. Come, let us arise. Worship God.